welcome to planes overhead i know it's been really really long that i've uploaded a video but i uh, found some time so i thought i'll just continue with the radio navigation series and um, hence uh, we're continuing today on the ils now after the vor on the last video a uh, standard disclaimer this uh, images are owned by the oxford aviation uh, academy book is just for understanding ils easier Okay, the ILS, it stands for Instrument Landing System, provides a pilot with a visual instruction on the flight deck to enable him to fly the aircraft down to a predetermined glide path or extended runway center line to his decision height. Okay, basically it will give us uh, horizontal and uh, vertical uh, guidance so that we can land the aircraft safely on the runway. And uh, decision height is the height where you actually decide whether you want to continue the landing or you want to do a missed approach procedure. The ILS can be used both in day and night. It operates uh, within the frequency range of 108.11, 108.0 to 11.975 MHz with odd number in the first decimal. I'll come to that in a while. It is generally paired with the DME. Okay, DME is distance measuring equipment. It will give us the distance to touchdown. Okay, distance from the ILS antenna. ILS has the following components: localizer, glide path, marker beacons and DME. We shall discuss all of them. The principle of operation is difference in depth modulation. Okay, Zero indication means there is no difference and the aircraft is on profile. For example, this is the localizer antenna. On the right side you have frequency modulated at 150 Hz. On the left side you have frequency modulated at 90 Hz. If an aircraft is in this region, he will be receiving more of the yellow signal and if the aircraft is here, he will be receiving more of the blue signal. So whenever he's in the yellow signal on this side, the aircraft will be asked on the indication, he'll ask to go to the right because he's on the left of the localizer. If he's re receiving more of blue signal, he'll be asked to move to the left. Once you are on profile, it will be an equi signal. That is what it means, difference in depth modulation. There is no difference now. Basically, it's in the middle. Hence, there is no difference and hence the aircraft is on the localizer. The glide path also works on a similar concept. There is a true glide path signal below which there will be 150 megahertz, 150 megahertz signal and uh, 150 hertz signal and above it's the 90 hertz lobe. If the aircraft is flying above the true glide path, he will be receiving more of 90 hertz and the indication in the cockpit will ask you to go down. If he is flying below, he will receive one more of 150 hertz modulated lobes and hence he will be asked to go above. The problem with the glide path is the 90 hertz lobe is a big lobe with small 150 hertz lobes. So at a certain point, if you can see this curve is meeting the true glide path, that is fine. But again at the curve here, there's another false equisignal. Okay, there's a false lobe. So it is a good chance that you intercept the glide path like this and you'll end up high on approach and you will not actually land on profile. Okay, so it's very important that on the glide slope you always intercept below the true glide path. Do not come high on the glide slope and try to intercept it. You may end up intercepting the false glide slope because this is also an equisignal point. And but that is not the true glide path. Markers. Okay, so markers are uh, giving us whether you are on profile on the localizer throughout the approach. Outer marker, blue in color, two dashes per second, 400 hertz, low pitch from touchdown. It is indicating that you're 6.5 to 11.1 .1 kilometers to touchdown. Middle marker, amber, alternate dots and dashes, three per second, frequency is 1,300, pitch is medium, and it is indicating that you're 1,050 meters plus or minus 150 meters to touchdown. Inner marker, white, six dots per second, 3,000 hertz, high pitch you're just 75 to 450 meters from touchdown so markers uh, were commonly used in the olden days uh, just to give us an idea how close is the touchdown point basically how close is the runway uh, but nowadays uh, inner, mark inner marker and middle marker have been completely eliminated uh, across the whole uh, the globe outer markers are still there on some stations but have been slowly being removed because the accuracy of the localizer and glide slope have increased tremendously the technology improvement frequency of the localizer is 108 to 111 decimal 975 megahertz or decimal is in the first digit this is in the vhf band 
basically what it means is 109 decimal 1 110 decimal 3 111 decimal 5 all the odd decimals are in the first digit glide slope 329 decimal 15 to 335 megahertz this is in the uhf band this was in the vhf band this is the uhf band markers are all at 75 megahertz okay emission code is alpha 8 whiskey you can have a look at this this is not really important but the code is alpha 8 whiskey which is important to know errors so ILS will obviously have some errors now beam bending is majorly because of atmospheric conditions okay where the ILS frequency ILS transmission the signals are inter getting interfered by the atmospheric conditions scalloping is caused by reflections uh, which result in rapid fluctuations of the needles which are impossible to follow the scalloping is like when the signal is coming from multiple directions scalloping in English basically means jumping so the signal is jumping the indications on the cockpit will also keep continuously jump beam noise is uh, majorly because of the uh, noise generated because of the transmitter interference that is happening and uh, pilots to check information what they are receiving is very very important because uh, you have to check the serviceability of the localizer and the glide path you can do that by looking at the warning flags if there is any and monitor the signals properly and check with your altitude and DME height call out whether you are on profile or not sometimes the instrument the ILS may be working but the instrument on the aircraft may not be receiving proper information or ILS may have failed instrument is working fine Factors affecting the accuracy. ILS multipath interference due to large reflecting opti uh, objects. This can be majorly due to anything like a vehicle, any fixed structures or uh, airport objects. The aircraft itself can behave like a large reflecting object which can cause uh, reflections, multipath interference and reflections. Something like a critical area and sensitive area where uh, aircraft landing is protected the signals are protected by keeping the aircraft and vehicles away from a critical and sensitive area. Weather, snow and heavy rain uh, generally attenuates the ILS signals and it can reduce the range and affect the accuracy. FM broadcast, basically all our radio stations that are there transmit uh, in the similar VHF ranges, not of course not the same range, but they have a chance to overspill into the ILS range and cause interference with the ILS signal. ILS coverage, this is the range that we're talking about. Localizer, 10 degrees left or right has a range of 25 nautical miles. The signal can reach 25 nautical miles, 10 or, 10 plus or minus 10 left or right of the localizer. Beyond 10, basically 25 degrees, it can reach 17 nautical miles, the signal. Glide path, it is, if the glide path is there 0 0.45 to 1.75 phi of the range is the glide path range meaning the aircraft will receive signals within this range for a 3 degree glide slope if generally this is the standard uh, glide slope across the world uh, 3 degrees the limit is 1.35 to 5.25 degrees so the range of the uh, glide slope signal that you'll receive is between this 1.35 to 5.25 ILS presentation and interpretation. A localizer full scale deflection indicates 2.5 degree left or right of the localizer. Basically, if this vertical bar is fully to the left, meaning a 2.5 degrees left or right of the localizer. Okay. Glide path, on the other hand, or basically also means 0.5 per dot. Each dot is 0.5. Okay. 0.5, 1, 1.52, basically starts from middle. So it becomes 2.5 completely. A full scale deflection indicates 0.7. Okay, 0.7 meaning glide slope. If it is fully up, you are 0.7 off. If you're on a 3 degree glide slope, if the glide slope is fully up, you're off by 2.3 degrees. Okay, it's not a very good situation to be so high. Okay, so each dot is 0.14. Okay, so 0 0.14, 0 0.28, 0 0.42 and so on and point seven okay then ILS categories these are the ILS categories that we have cat 1 cat 2 cat 3 alpha cat 3 bravo cat 3 charlie 
decision height as i told you earlier is the height where you the pilot decides whether he wants to continue the landing or he wants to do a missed approach or a go around that you can call it cat 1 the decision height is 200 feet minimum requirement runway visual range meaning the visibility on the runway should be minimum of 550 meters cat 2 100 feet is the decision height rvr should be 300 meters cat 3 alpha decision height is less than 100 feet but rvr requirement is 200 meters cat 3 bravo less than 50 feet rvr should be 75 minimum okay cat 3b is what uh, generally commercial uh, passenger planes uh, use these days when uh, low visibility conditions are uh, you know faced in ma major country major uh, cities ag across the world during uh, winter season something like uh, in india you can uh, name few cities like delhi uh, lucknow jaipur okay and further in northern europe and even northern america where the visibility is drop cat 3c is decision height is 0 feet rvr requirement is 0 basically you can just land uh, in absolutely nil uh, visibility conditions cat 3c is uh, not there on commercial uh, aviation i mean the aircraft may be capable but uh, it is not approved for commercial uh, passenger planes but uh, military jets do use cat 3c so majorly we are all using cat 3b in low visibility conditions So that's about the ILS. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel, like the Facebook page, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, comment below if you have any doubts. You can contact me on the links on your screen. Cheers and happy landings. Have a great day. Hi, take care. Bye.